Yeah, looks good. I see you have a lot of slides. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not intending to go through the slides like a presentation, right? I have them in case, you know, you ask or audience asks yeah. a question that's relevant. I'll go there. Okay. I'll go okay. through the first slide with a little bit about a minute about Auth0 or so, okay. and then we take it from there. Okay, good, good. Let's see. I have a few people already joined, I suppose. Let's see. Oh. I've got Sean, and uh, we're showing four people, but I can only see three. Okay. Where are you today, uh, Amin? Based in Sydney today, Sydney, Australia. Which part of Sydney? The lockdown bit or the open bit? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are in lockdown. Yes, we are in lockdown. But I have my boot jab, so I'm looking forward <laughs> to some freedom. Yeah, starting yeah. I think end of this month. Yeah, lose track of it. Yeah, you're based in Singapore, Jonathan. Yeah, right? Singapore here. Yeah. yeah. Good. Okay, we, we'll just give it a, a minute or so. Let me see. Sure. Uh, time is 8.50 here, 10.50 Sydney. And uh, people are just coming out from the first, uh, the first keynotes. So we see, we see how many people come because there's still, there's still more keynotes, everything. So many things happen in a workshop. It's a very busy agenda. I know, back to back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, so I mean, let's try and make it interactive. Uh, it's gonna be a discussion on preparing um, your API for emerging FinTech standards, right? So the clue is in the title. <laughs> so the topic is around um, API authentication authorization to support FinTech um, and obviously, Bit, bit different from uh, other industries because there's a, a lot of expectation for security and standards that come with it. And I know there's two standards that you're going to be talking about, uh, the FA, the FAP one and two, and the CDR. Did, did I correct? Did I pronounce it? That's um, right. That's right. Yeah. I mean, uh, so the C CDR being the Australian version. Correct. Okay. Um, and I think you're very well placed to to talk about this as a solution, ar senior solution architect, sorry, in identity and cloud with a lot of different uh, specific technical qualifications, as one would expect, and a lot of customers behind you, uh, including the big ones, Telstra, Boeing, Qantas, um, and a long industry experience. So um, we're going to learn about also a bit about Auth0 as an identity management platform, but that's not the key objective. Really, the, the purpose here is, is about fintech uh, authorization, authentication, and, and what you want to ask as, as uh, members, um, attendees of this roundtable. So please put your questions in the chat um, because we don't have the ability um, to, uh, to sort of bring people onto the platform here. Uh, for various reasons um and yeah and i mean if you want to just sort of uh, solicit information from people what they're doing in their environment feel free to do that we've got about 25 minutes it will go very quickly so without that without any more uh, introduction uh we'll just put hand it over to to amin uh to uh, give us some uh, grounding in in the topic thank sure. you yeah, uh, thanks, Jonathan. Thanks for intro. I think uh, you did uh, you did my bit as well. That's good. You know, I had the plan to go a little bit about myself, but uh, I'll skip that again for the interest of time. You did a, a quick intro, and then I'll jump a little bit about the the, the company I'm working for, Art Zero, and then we go into the the meat of the conversation today. So, Art Zero, probably some of the audience may know it's a uh, well known in the Siam space, identity as a service for consumers. So we are a company. Our headquarter is in Seattle. We have headquarter, you know, offices across the globe and our customers as well across the globe. And what we provide is a um, cloud-based identity um, 
an authentication platform. So you don't need to build these things in house. You can just leverage Auth0 to uh, offload that bit of the logic for you. You can focus on your main business logic. Why uh, Auth0 has been successful is that we uh, provide an extendable platform for you to bring your you know customers and their credentials and their social logins and easily so looking from the left you know customer jumps online wants to sign in to your application we have a universal login experience that you can host your login experience for web for native experience and from there you can sign into your social providers google facebook twitter wherever you or you can have a database of the credentials of the users and it's pretty customizable our universal login experience then we have an engine called rules or actions that you can customize okay after the customer authenticated what else i want to do from there add claims you know do multi-factor all sort of logic could be sitting there and then you know we run our uh, attack prevention engine we run our second factor authentication if necessary and then go back to the application. This is built on top of the standards. You know, you can integrate with us through SAML, through WSFED, through OAuth2 through and OpenID Connect. So it's an interesting uh, platform. And it is, uh, if you haven't had a chance to play with it and have a look, I would uh, suggest uh, uh, to take a couple of minutes and test it. But the, uh, the you know the impact of fintech. Let's talk about the the topic of today. I don't have too many. I I don't intend to really uh, just go slide by slide. But this slide is, uh, definitely I want to cover. So why we're we talking about uh, fintech and new standards such as FAPI, right? OAuth two uh, been you know standard for. Um, for delegation of access uh, has been very successful standard uh, so far. And then on top of that, we had OpenID Connect, but uh, that is for use for authentication, not just uh, you know authorization delegation. And they've been very successful. We see them everywhere on the internet today. But then there are some known areas. You know, I think the OpenID Connect and what two has been. Uh, designed very well in terms of how much I go to security or how much I go toward the usability of this standard. And they're sitting somewhere in a sweet spot for most of the use cases. May I'm, I'm trying to, let's say, share my photos um, through Google Drive with uh, another, for example, printing service. I can easily do that. I get the the scope that says, hey, um, share photos, and it's done through Watch 2 and everything works. But when we talk about fintech, you know, when we talk about um, banking API, when we talk about insurance API, when we talk about opening up the data, um, that the financial data, that level of security may not be enough. So that's where um, OpenID Connect initiated this FAPI working group. This is okay. We know these areas, so let's now go and try to tackle them. So it's uplift the security uh, to a good bit when we when we go to FAPI. And there are many terms and things, so I, a simplification of different standards. So when we talk about FAPI, we have the FAPI 1 baseline, um, which is the foundation of, um, you know, it's designed mostly for read access. So previously, before it is now con called baseline, in the implementation draft 2, it was like, read and read write and you see those read and read write everywhere as well so based on gives us the good security for read access then we have the FAPI one uh, advanced uh, profile which is again um added security for read write access uh, we have FAPI two which is you know is FAPI one but added some more uh, features on top of that to be able to do um, reach authorization requests and grant management. And we have another standard buddy, um, Kantara, which is working on um, consent recipient specification on top of the OAuth 2. Um, okay, I pause here. Um, Jonathan, um, 
Well, it's a uh, it's it's a pretty specialized topic, right? In terms of standards, <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. So um, I wonder uh, from from the participants here. Um, I see a lot of solution architects. I wonder who um, who is working in financial institution. Be interested to know that. There is a question from Darren. I, I wonder if you can see see his question there. Yeah. I'm in. Let me see. Uh, should I go to Q and A section? Oh, uh, it's just in the chat. In the chat. Okay. Yeah, I I can read it out if needed. Uh, okay. Uh, I can read it, Darren. Okay. Keen to hear a perspective on whether a consent and consent management can be handled as an authorization object higher up in the stack. Um, well, uh, I think you know what the, the uh, consent and consent management is uh, is a very important part of the whole um, these aspects, and maybe something that was missed in FAPI one, and then FAPI two tried to address that. Um, it is really not much, uh, you know, the way, for example, it is implemented in the cdr platform it's very custom you know the in in the australia data right platform it's been uh, you have the interaction and the arrangement id so there is not but they, they build their own um so if i go back to the question yes it could be considered sometime outside of the um authentication stack consent is sitting outside which is uh, totally valid, but with FAPI2 and which RAR, we try to close that gap and bring those as a part of this spec. So we don't need to each jurisdiction or each uh, FinTech region go and implement their own. We're trying to make that as a part of the spec and standard as well. Did I manage to answer that question? Well, I, I hopefully for Darren, I don't know if Darren felt it was answered. Uh, but we'll let him reply. And then the, uh, the key thing here is about these standards, right? We've had some questions come in when people register. Uh, really, where do they originate from? Uh, I mean, where do you start from with this? From a regulatory directive? Or is, is, it, is it from something that uh, is more security driven from within the organization? Right. Look, uh, this you have to do from two angles. One is that the, the standard spec, which is like, your FAPI one, FAPI two, and the other one is that which region you're operating. Because when we talk, for example, uh, FinTech and open banking, the standard is just half of it. The other part is the, the API that is approved in that region to be how the data recipient and data holder will share the information. So that is the other bit. Because of that, let me see if we can uh, go to another slide, bear with me. Um, yeah, so different, you know, the countries so far that have been adopting the FAPI, uh, they have, uh, you know, you take, for example, the UK, AU, New Zealand, and Brazil, like if you're definitely building FinTech APIs in one of these uh, countries, then you have to follow the standards that are defined in that so these for example uh cdr or australia um open banking is that i had taken fapi one and build on top of that so the authentication bit is fapi one and then they have the api which is exposed as an open api spec for okay this is how you communicate to your bank or your data holder um and there is another version of the draft which is talking about the how you talk to your energy retailers, right? So, and there is more, like there's more coming up. There is uh, the, the intention of the CDR uh, is to cover all the industry with, um, you know, you can just talk over the API with different industry uh, uh, verticals. So, uh, uh, going back to the question, Jonathan, you asked, uh, an API developer should come from two angles, make itself familiar with the standards and also the API spec for their own uh, region that they're building for. Okay. 
So the point is, one can't be ignorant of this, and the standards are there to support um, a whole range of applications in fintech. Um, correct. Uh, correct. Um, like, uh, if if you look at our, um, for example, the CDR website, and I focus mostly on CDR because I know this is the uh, uh, Australian version of the uh, API day. So the custom like audience might be more familiar. Let me go to uh, like in the CDR. As I said, yeah, I don't know if the font size is good enough. We have the banking industry. We have the energy telco and coming up and then each is exposing their own API. Like this is the okay so API, I, this is the it's a API. kind of hard slide to see but i think yeah. people can zoom in and out and pinch and would this slide be available afterwards a hundred percent yes okay great we, we'll put it in the chat or maybe you can go to the auth zero booth right uh, yes, I will make it available through our booth. Yes, I'll talk to you. Yeah, so let, let me see how, we, how we're doing for time. I mean, time time goes quickly here. Yeah. We're sort of 15 minutes into it. Uh, I think this is good for awareness, some starting point where to start. Um, now, we talked about the regulators and the standards. Um, there's a question from Darren. Is there a timeline to take up FAPI 2 for each of these regions, right? So by regions, I'm assuming the geographies that you've shown. I'm not sure. Yeah whether it would be regional in Australia. <laughs> Australia seems quite uh, quite federated right now, but I assume it's yes. one standard for <laughs> no, by very country. Good no, very good. To me, yeah. uh, it makes sense. Let me go back. So, uh, you know, let me, uh, the, uh, the fact is like um, Australia probably will adopt uh, CDR, will adopt FAPI 2. I think the timeline is an 18 month work from where we are today to adopt FAPI 2 because Australia doesn't really have the uh, the consent management and read write access so far in the so it's read access with its own version of the consent. Maybe other regions like UK, New Zealand and Brazil they adopted what UK did so they have a lodgement intent uh, policy or LIP for short that uh, indicates how you consent and then you subsequently access the on, on, on under that consent uh, because that is uh, australia hasn't followed that's it's not a standard that kind of like uh, how the uk implemented it um that is that is i, I think that's something that cdr will implement and the plan is within uh, 18 months yes 18 months so it sounds sounds like a long time yeah. away um but take, taking a, uh, take taking it back a level right on this question we're talking about fintech are there other industries like energy industry uh this comes from uh, jatin uh solution architect um and other industries where authentication api is um is also being applied or is it is it is is it yep. fintech is it banking we're talking quite uh, quite broadly here. Yeah, uh, look, uh, that's the like beauty, for example, of CDR is that it's not just uh, banking. Uh, the, yeah, the first spec of the standard of the Open API standard that's published is the contract between the banks and um, you know fintechs, but it's not stopping there. So as I said, uh, it is expanding. It is designed to expand to different sectors. Uh, energy is coming up, um, telco is coming up, and the authentication part remains the same. It's the FAPI 1 and in 18 months, hopefully FAPI 2, uh, but the API part is the one that's evolving, right? The API, if you I have a link on the page that, so we have the, if you go to the consumer uh, standards uh, GitHub page, you will find open API spec for banking and common. And then there are drafts in the GitHub that the team is working on the CDS team to add energy and retail and uh, so okay. yeah. So so you've mentioned about API. It's the API aspect. Uh, we've got a question from uh, someone in document management, someone in postdoctoral research, and their questions around APIs and the documentation. What role do they play? And integration with other APIs. Uh, and this also ties in with the, uh, you know, how does the APIs help the fintech industry? So I, I think a few questions here is that maybe could, could you sort of um, organize 
how APIs fit into this and what one looks at, or authentication is one aspect, then there's going to be security standards about the actual protocols, right, and the um, the API standards. Could you could you just kind of relate how how does how, why is this important to the uh, to fintech industry and how does it integrate and build into existing architectures and documentations? So a few questions there. Sure. Uh, so the questions I heard one is that you know the role of APIs in fintech and then the other one was about you know the role of API documentation into the adoption. Um, mm. Did I get that right, uh, Jonathan? So yeah, let's break it down, right? Yeah. Uh, so the question, a few questions. I'll ask them as they are. How does API help fintech industry? Uh, what are the integration uh -huh. challenges of the API, and then documentation? Documentation. All right. Okay. Yeah. I have. Uh, let me see. I had. I was expecting some uh, questions on that. So okay, this is a good start. So why API and fintech? You know. API, I think, is the backbone of a fintech revolution. Uh, APIs are replacing insecure ways and non-standard ways that we had in the past, such as screen scrapping. Let's say I want to give, for example, uh, my uh, zero or just a train naming, like or Microsoft Money access to my bank, so they can go and then um, give me populate my um, tax return, for example. So they then. Before standard, I had to give my net bank credentials to this app to go and you know literally log in and read the HTML and parse it, and so which is the screen scrapping, which is very dangerous security wise if you look at it, um, and brittle as well because what if this app actually takes my credential and does something else? I have no control over it. So API is is a backbone that we can say securely to. Um, um independent companies can talk to each other and consume the data one the, the data holder and one the data recipient and uh i think it healthy competition is also important like imagine at least in australia let's say you want to change your home loan okay you want to go to another bank or financial institute that is offering a better rate or whatever there is so much paperwork that you just okay I skip that, right? Yeah, you know, if you want to change your home loan, for example, you you're signing up easily for weeks of paperwork and getting this and that sort of. With uh, fintech standards, I can just could be clicks away. I say, okay, I'm happy to share my banking details and my income statements with this institute. They go and you know immediately they analyze all the data. They figure out your eligibility and your you know income estimates everything and then within seconds they can give you yes or no we're giving you uh, you know you can change your home loan to us or whatever and this is you know the competition is easier so do not hold up um with one um banking you can easily shop around and you can build new things you can innovate um, you don't have to be a bank necessarily to bring new products in the finance sector you can let's say i'm a startup i have a smart idea that you know i have a financial planner that could save you um, a lot across you know a month but uh, how can i uh, launch this new idea uh, i'm not a bank so i either should have to go and talk to a bank which is like months or years of work or i can launch my app and just authorize to access the data that banks are exposing. So, so to answer first question, I think it's just innovation, competition, and the removal of uh, paperwork. Uh, and then the role of AP, uh, the documentation, the second question, I don't have a serious slide for that, but if you look at, for example, in the, in the CDR and other, uh, so UK open banking and New Zealand audit, we can see that the um, the impact of the, everything is open API spec, all the websites, everything that you can see is generated from that. So it means that your latest version of API is 100% compatible with the document that you ship because they're not two different artifacts. You ship the API, there is open, open API built on top of that, which builds the documentation website. 
And we are zero. We are also a very good example of that as well. We have our API website, which is rendered uh, from the spec that we publish. So uh, everything is is uh, published from there. And the second benefit of you know good documentation, especially on top of the Swagger or Open API spec, is that again with the flip of a switch, I can uh, generate a SDK for whatever language I'm working with. It's not, again, uh, days of work to take the API spec and build an SDK for it. That could be auto-generated as well if the quality of documentation is good enough for uh, um, for SDK generation. And uh, the third question, what was the third question, uh, Jonathan? Yeah, so it's a related question. And um, we talked about... Um, integration challenges. So I, I guess what might be useful is some kind of example here, because you've, you've talked about the, the modernization of, of banking and fintech apps, but in terms of integration, does it enable, like you can log into your bank and then get into your, your partner's uh, system seamlessly? You know, how, how much, where does integration start? Where does it end? Uh, so uh, again, talking about, um, Australia a little bit, which other countries are very similar. You know, the data holder and data recipient, they're all accredited and they become like a registered and accredited uh, data holder and data recipient, which if you go to the CDR website, you can see a list of all the financial institutes that either are data holder or data recipient. And uh, you need to, first of all, be registered there, you know, go all the paperwork, all the um, approvals to be registered there. And that's where you can now start to expose uh, the API. If you're a data holder, expose your API so that, uh, uh, for, for read. And if you're a data recipient, you can consume the API to just there. So still the first step, at least for FinTech uh, in Australia and uh, open banking is that you have to do the paperwork to be registered consumer or data um, exposed uh, ex you know, data holder uh, party okay uh thank you uh if we have any more questions from uh, the participants uh, is uh, anyone using this at the moment uh, how are you doing author authorization authentication within your industry uh so it'd be really interested to know if you want to put that in the chat um Let's see what else is there about security. So there's some questions about security systems on the APIs and how to keep customer data secure with the APIs. Okay, that's that's a good question. Um, I, I think I can see if I, I prepare something for security. So let me, uh, yeah, so, uh, what is being considered in um, in FAPI for security and uh, in CDR as well? One of the, I think, the uh, key aspects is that from, again, I'm coming from the uh, identity and authentication perspective. When we talk about the access tokens and the important of the, we don't expose the, you know, minimize the PII or the, um, personal information that's exposed in access token, minimize that so we don't put unnecessary information uh, there. And even because we have the sub claim in the access token that says, um, this is the unique user identifier. Uh, what is enforced in CDR is we have to use PP ID or pairwise uh, ID for users. So if two, let's say data recipient uh, companies are working with one data holder. So I'm extracting the data. Uh, they cannot correlate this data uh, because each will get their own version of this sub, which is hashed basically for that particular uh, consumer. Um, so that is, you know, if you're planning to uh, expose or consume the data, um, consider that your sub should be PPID 
uh, if you want to expose your API, I think the difference between first party and uh, third party consumers and how you should consent definitely third party um, clients to, okay, the user should consent, allow the user to consent. I'm exposing and delegating my access. This is the duration and these are the scopes that I'm delegating. And, you know, there are other, uh, in terms of security, sticking to TLS 1.2 plus because, you know, downgrading and the, the ciphers that were a bit problematic were removed from TLS 1.2 and 1.3. Um, send the constraints. So if your access token or refresh token is exposed in the wild, uh, it's not just the only thing that is necessary to access your API. You still need a simple constraint. Um, let's say a key pair, MTLS key pair or uh, client uh, client uh, private key to be able to uh, consume the API. Those are, I think, the main things that I can think of. Again, in the in the space of this conversation we're having today, to be able. Yeah. Well, it's it's okay. There it seems to be a lot there, and I want I want to. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, re I realize you're an expert in this. I just wonder what our participants uh, think about this, whether any of this is new or not. Uh, look, we're at the, the top of the session already, right? As, as these things happen, time, time flies. Uh, how, how can people reflect on this in terms of, are you available to, to sort of discuss, realizing that everyone's at their different level of understanding or, or maturity on this? Uh, so how can people reach you, I mean? Uh... So, you know, LinkedIn, I think is a good way. So, uh, yeah. and then uh, through our, you know, we are uh, in the industry. So everyone approaching to Art Zero, we're working as well to be able to, uh, you know, be compatible with the API, be able to assist our customer base in, uh, within Australia, with this region. Um, not quite there yet, but we get getting there. So either through Art Zero's, um, uh, you know, if you would jump on the website, you can chat to our uh, sales representatives or through LinkedIn if you want to talk to myself. That would be great. Okay. Thanks very much, Amin, for your time and everybody who attended. Uh, what we do is, uh, Amin, are you okay to hang around for a few minutes afterwards in the chat, just in case people have got some, uh, yeah, some no questions that come to mind? Okay. Sure. And um, so with that, thanks very much for attending and have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.